What's going on YouTube? Ryan Alex back from Dopamon again. Today we need to talk about Team Slovakia for the upcoming Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. In just a few weeks now, it's uh, January 18th, I believe they start on February the 2nd, so we only have a couple of weeks left uh, before the Olympics start, and today, Team Slovakia announced their roster, their full roster for the tournament, so we're here to try to predict their lines, give a little bit of preview on each of the players, who they are, where they play, ties to the NHL, things like that. Yeah, and uh, if you like this kind of com uh, content, treat, uh Drop a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Uh, without further ado, though, starting goaltender for Team Slovakia, we believe, is going to be Branislav Konrad. Uh, and with him to back him up, Patrick Rybar and Matej Thomas. Tomek. Matej Tomek. Tomek. Uh, Branislav Konrad, he's been their guy for uh, for a long time now. He's a little bit older, 34 years old, which isn't too old for a goalie, but, you know, that still is, you know... But by Olympic standards even. Uh, he was their goaltender for the qualifying round. A lot of this team is from that qualifying round, but uh, yeah, he's uh, definitely going to be the starter. He's had a great season this year. I know he was injured a little bit earlier, and there's some question marks about if he'll uh, be there or not, but uh, since coming back, he's been great. So, Yeah, the other two guys, uh, Patrick Rybar playing in Dynamo Minsk. Either one of these guys could be the backup. It'll probably be Rybar because... Uh, the other guy is a little bit younger, Tomek. He's 24, 24. years old. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers draft pick, but yeah, a little bit more, a little less experienced. So we'll probably see Rybar be the backup for the most part mm -hmm. with Conrad as the starter. And our first defensive pairing. We have Leafs legend. Martin Marinson and his partner Peter Cherishnak. Uh Marty Marinson, like I said, played for a few years in Toronto in the Leafs organization. Uh, one of my kind of low-key, more favorite players, even though he wasn't the greatest here in the NHL, especially. But he, he was he was good. He was a good pro for us. He was a good extra guy for a long time. Played in the Marlies. He was very good. He's one of those guys. He's very good in the AHL. But as soon as you brought him up to the NHL, he just didn't have the the skills necessary to keep up anymore. Um, big, long, lanky guy. Went to uh, Trinac in the end of this year. Has 13 points in 32 games. So decent decent numbers over there. Um, big, long guy. Six foot four. He'll be probably. The big minute eater for this team. He's probably there. I think he's their defenseman or for, player in general with the most NHL games experience on this yes. team. I think Marco Dano is close, but I think it is Martin Marinson. And Peter Cheresnak, uh, originally a New York Rangers draft pick in 2011, 28 years old. Another big guy, another big guy six foot three. So they got some size on the uh, front part. This first defensive pairing, uh, five points in three Olympic qualifying games for Czech Republic. 34 and 40 uh, in the Czechia League. Sorry, I said Czech Republic a couple times. Uh, mm. Czechia League. Um, yeah, big points over there. These will be their two big guys for Slovakia. And their uh, their second pairing on the left we have Mikhail Tchaikovsky, and on the right a guy I really like, Simon Nemitz. I'll start with uh, Tchaikovsky. He wasn't. He was one of the uh, the. He's the only defenseman that wasn't on the qualifying team uh, for the Olympics. He's 29. He plays in the KHL right now for uh, for uh, the Sibir. Uh, he's a guy that I felt like was a more of a defensive defenseman, but is in his prime right now. In the past two three seasons, he's really stepped up his game and uh, uh, never played in the NHL. Has a little bit of AHL experience, but uh, I feel like he could be a huge impact and. Uh, his uh, I feel like it would complement really well with Simon Nemitz. Uh, Nemitz is a, a a top draft pick for 2022 for the for the NHL entry draft. 17 right now, and he'll uh, his birthday being February 15th. He's going to turn 18 like during the Olympics, so he might he's incredibly young, but he's incredibly skilled. Uh, we get we got to see him play at the World Juniors, where I, I felt like he was uh, one of the best defensemen in the entire tournament. And I'm excited to see him play here. We think he could be a second pairing, and uh, paired with Tchaikovsky, would be a would be a pretty good top four here. 
yeah, Nemec, I'm I'm a huge fan of his in this year's draft. He'll be a, a great guy to watch. Um, see how many minutes he gets. He's uh, might be the most dynamic guy for the defensive crew on this team. Um, could be a huge part. Moving on, third pairing, we got Samuel Knashko and Mario German. German. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing names. Um, Knashko. Let's switch over. 19-year-old, another young guy for this team is a side, actually a Columbus Blue Jackets pick in 2020 in the third round. Um, is playing over, or well, was playing in Finland. He recently came over to the WHL, Seattle Thunderbirds, uh, and has three points in eight games over there. Um, but he was part of the uh, TPS Liga um, for the last few seasons on defense there. Another young guy on this group, and Mario Yerman, 24 years old, right-hand shot, playing in Slovakia, I believe. No, sorry, Finland. Uh, one goal, one assist, HPK for Liga. Uh, plays, I think, in the same organization that um, Kanashko did, except Kanashko played on the U20 part of that mm-hmm. team in Liga. So they are a part of the same organization, so they might have a little bit of familiarity there. Yeah, that's our third pairing. And uh, most recently at the uh, the Deutschland Cup in uh, middle of November in 2021, uh, Kanazko was paired with Treznak uh, on a line. So it's possible that they get paired together, but I haven't been hu- a huge fan of Kanazko, but internationally, I've seen him step up a lot. I feel like this could be a, a, big, uh, a big chance for him to show what his game is. And so for our final pairing, on the left we have Martin Gernat, and on the right, Merrick DeLoga. Uh, uh, both are a little bit older, they've got uh, experience. Uh, Martin Gernat's 28, he has uh, himself some AHL experience, so he's currently playing in uh, the, the top Swiss league. He's the only player uh, from Slovakia, uh, only uh, only defenseman in Slovak- uh, for the Slovakian team playing in Switzerland. Uh, it is the a, a really high league. It is, uh, of course, better than the Slovakian league, the Swiss league. So it's a step up uh, for them uh, nationally. And uh, Marek Deloga, he's been on the uh, the Olympic team last year, played a big part in it. But uh, I feel like his career, I don't know. I feel like he's kind of stepped off a little bit. He's played in the KHL and SHL. I don't think he's going to be a huge part of this team this time around. Yeah, he did. He, like you said, he was part of the last Olympic team played in four games for that Slovakia team. Uh, that Slovakia team did not do well. I think they were 11th out of 12 in their tables and they got uh, bumped into Olympic qualification uh, for this year. So we'll see how much this team can improve from their performance in 2018. Starting off our forward core, we have Peter Chelerik, Merrick Hrivic, and Thomas Yurko. Thomas Yurko being the big name out of here, he's the guy who has played in the NHL the most out of, out of this crew. I'm pretty sure that the uh, Cherishlik, I think, had a little bit of time in Boston. And Hrivik, I'm pretty sure, has never played in the NHL. Oh, he's played, never mind, he's played three, yeah, just 20-ish games uh, for between f- the Flames and Rangers. Yeah, and this top here. line was also their uh, their qualifying line. This is their number one line, so we're pretty confident that they're going to go with this pairing again. Uh, yeah, this was this was their go-to line. They did most of the scoring for them. Uh, Chilarik in Avangard Omsk this year, 25 points in 39 games. Uh, horrific. KHL as well, as you can see. And Thomas Yurko who I was a big fan of when he when he was drafted by Detroit. Never really was one of those guys that had all the skill, but never put it all together. Um, yeah, playing in the Kazakhstani team in the KHL. Um, 11 points in 17 games there. Um, yeah, the, this will be their main offensive line, I think. Um, but the next line has got, a, I believe, a couple players on it that we like. Alex, if you want to do that. Yeah, on the left we have Christian Pospisil, 
down the middle, Libor Hudacek, and on the right, Marco Dano. And uh, I think we both really like Marco Dano. Uh, Dano. He's got all the skills, couldn't quite make it work at the NHL level, but he was able to score a lot at the AHL. He's a big scorer, uh, you know, he's, uh, and uh, playing in uh, Czechia this year, uh, he's scoring a lot too. So uh, I, we, I think this could even be another scoring line for them uh, if he plays big. Uh, Libor Hudacek, he's a winger, sometimes plays center. We have him down the middle. Uh, they play together, Hudacek and Dano, in the qualifying round. He uh, himself has bounced around the KHL a bunch, uh, currently playing the Dynamo Minsk. Yeah, the Dynamo Minsk. Uh, and uh, Kristen Pom- uh, Pospisil on the left, he is the younger one. I remember him, you know, three or you know, what's it, like three, maybe three or four years ago, maybe even being like a top prospect for uh, for Toronto. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, he was uh, signed to. He was playing for um, the Solar Bears when they were mm-hmm. the Leafs ECHL team and not the Newfoundland Growlers. Um, yeah, played two games for the Marlies. I remember. I actually watched one of those two games. He did okay. I, I thought I thought he was pretty good. He obviously had two points, but. Uh, you know they decided to move on from him, but mm. playing pretty pretty well in in league of play and uh, national league play in uh, Switzerland this year. Third line. Fourth line. Third line. Is it second? Oh, I'm sorry. You're <laughs> right. I don't know how to count. One, two, three. We got yes. your... <laughs> We got your eyes, Slavkovsky. Michelle, Mikhail, Kristoff, and Samuel Takic. I pressed the wrong button. There you go. Uri Slavkowski, I'm a big fan of. He's a top draft pick in this upcoming draft. Plays over there. He's, I'm less so. He plays in, plays in Finland. You were a little less high on him than I was at the start of the year. You're starting to come back up on him. Um... I thought he played pretty well in the World Juniors. He didn't impress me as much as uh, Simon Nemec did. did. Um, but I think Uri Slavkowski's got, got what it takes to be a really good depth scoring forward for the Slovakia team. And obviously he's playing with Ben and not in the World Juniors with uh, his peers and guys his own age. But we'll see how he does here. 17 years old, isn't turning 18 until March, the end of March. So he'll still be 17 the whole tournament, unlike Nemec. So we'll see how he can do. Uh, Michael Kristoff. Five foot nine center, smaller guy. So we'll see how he works with uh, Slavkovsky being a little bit more bigger power guy. But he has 28 points in 35 games in the Czechia League this year. So obviously he has some offense in him. And Samuel Tkak, um, left shot, sometimes does play his off wing though. I did check that. We put him on the right side here. Um, plays in the Slovakia League, 35 points in 29 games. As you said, that league not as high on the list as far as um you know difficult leagues go compared to some of the others and in, in you know players from this tournament like the KHL and the Czech League and then mm-hmm. and then Finland Sweden and even the AHL but still part of it still a really good option yeah. for them Kristoff and Tatak and Takak they actually played together uh uh, on the same line in the Deutschland Cup that I had mentioned earlier. So they do have some chemistry together. Uh, when we talk about, you know, bringing a team together for a tournament like this, they haven't played very long, and chemistry can be a huge part of it. They had pretty good chemistry in that Deutschland Cup. I think they were second. They lost to Germany, I believe. Mm. Might be wrong. Maybe they were third. I uh, so I feel like them with Slav- Slavkovsky, that could be a, a an interesting line. Yeah, absolutely. In our fourth line, <clears throat> on the left, we have Adrian Holosinski. Down the middle, Pavel Regenda. And on the right, Milos Roman. Uh, of course, uh, Milos Roman was on the qualifying team. Uh, he's currently playing in Czechia. He's only 22 years old. He is one of the younger guys on this team. Uh, I know that uh, this team's been highlighted for having brought three teenagers uh, in Slavkovsky, Nemitz, and uh, uh, Kanazko. So you know, I feel like My- Milos Roman's a guy that maybe is getting a little bit, you know, uh, overshadowed, a little bit under, uh, you know, not enough attention brought to him because he's pretty good himself. He played in the WHL. He uh, went drafted by the Calgary Flames in the fourth round in 2018. 
currently playing in Czechia. I can I have a, I think that if he can have a big game here, he might improve his chances of maybe coming over to play in the NHL. Yeah, it could be a guy, and we'll see how this tournament affects uh, these players who play over overseas. We we saw a bunch of guys get signed out of uh, after the Olympic tournament in 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, including some bigger names from Russia. We'll get to eventually when we hear from them. But uh, guys like uh, Mikhi- uh, Gusev and, and Kaprizov are on that team. So, mm-hmm. And uh, Pavel Regenda, he's big, six foot four. Yep. Uh, he was all. He also played on that uh, that uh, the the Deutschland Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, this whole line, in fact, all played together. So. Uh, that's some good chemistry for them. In this order, this is why they played. So Yeah, that's uh, why they... Two months ago, yeah, and they threw them together yeah. again. Yeah, Regenda you know, on Elite Prospects there is actually listed as a left wing, right wing. So mm-hmm. uh, he did play center We <laughs> in that Deutschland Cup. So we'll see what order they have them in. Elite Prospects might be a little, a little wrong here. But mm-hmm. just our extra forwards, just to round it out. Here we got Milos Kellerman and Peter Zuzin. Uh, Kellerman, 22 years old. He's another young guy, six foot two, undrafted, playing in the Czechia League, 15 points in 34 games over there. These will be their ex guys. And Peter Zuzin, 31 years old, a little bit more of a veteran to the system over there, uh, playing in the Slovakia League, 30 points in 33 games, um, 33 and 49 last year. So, yeah, he doesn't even have a picture. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, those are our extra guys. That's our lineup. What do you guys let me, let us know what you guys think? If you made it this far in the video, thanks so much for watching. How do you think Slovakia is gonna do in this tournament? I think they might be able to sneak out a win or two. They are in a difficult division, I believe. Let me just double check. They're in Group C with mm-hmm. Finland, Sweden, and Latvia, so they do have a, a difficult table to get through. Um, they'll most likely be able to beat a team like Latvia, uh, but Finland and Sweden will be a very, very difficult matchup for them, even with uh, some more top guys like uh, Nemec Slavkovsky um, for this upcoming draft. But yeah, anything else you want to say for this team, Alex? No, you know, other than um, I can't wait to see how many future Olympics that Nemec and Slavkovsky get to be a part of because obviously their age you know works right up they could be playing in you know 20 years playing in their fifth so that's pretty cool yeah we'll and see if think... if the NHL ever lets them back we'll assume that <laughs> yeah. they'll be NHL players so. this has to be over in four years right <laughs> And I really do like their uh, the defensive core here. I think that uh, they could carry them. You know, uh, if a team like Finland or Sweden goes, you know, unprepared and just, you know, can't get, you know, by their D and they face a hot goaltender like uh, Conrad, you know, they, they might be able to pull off a 2-1 or one nothing kind of win. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how Slovakia does. Let us know what you... Like again, what you where you think they'll they'll finish in their table? I'll say third, behind Finland and Sweden and in front of Latvia. But uh, yeah, we'll see you in just a couple weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like on this video. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers, so we'd appreciate the help there. And yeah, that's it for us. Peace.